What if I told you that even though stocks... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's not gonna work. Yeah, brother. What if I told you that even though stock markets across the globe have created vast amounts of wealth, the majority of stocks have not. So between 1926 and 2016, more than half of US stocks underperformed risk-free assets like one-month treasury bills. And this is not a US phenomenon. In a different study looking at global stocks, the share of stocks that underperformed the risk-free rate was even higher outside the US. So this might seem a bit paradoxical. How is it that most stocks destroy shareholder wealth while the aggregate stock market is doing very well. It has to do with something called asymmetry or skewness and it's not really that complex but it's a very important concept whether or not you are a passive or an active investor. First let's take a bit step back so when you're investing your money in a risky asset like stocks if you are rational or sensible, you should demand a higher return than you could get from a less riskier asset. If US Treasuries yields 4%, you wouldn't want to take on additional risk by investing in equities if you expected that your long-term returns would be less than that. You expect a premium for taking on that additional risk. So has that been the case? So for the stock market as a whole, this is definitely true. So in the paper called Do Stocks Outperform Treasury Bills, Henrik Bessenbinder estimates that 35 trillion trillion dollars have been created in so-called shareholder wealth in excess of the returns you will get from US Treasury bills. However, the same is not true for the typical stock. Turns out that most stocks actually underperformed US Treasury bills. Turns out the reason why the aggregate stock market has generated so much wealth above the risk-free rate is the performance of relatively few stocks. Bessenbinder finds that 90 stocks accounts for more than half of those 35 trillion dollars generated in shareholder wealth. And slightly more than 4% of stocks accounted for all of it, where the remaining 96% in aggregate matched the risk-free rate. Bessenbinder updated his work with global stocks, not just US stocks, and the results are even worse. Between 1990 and 2020, looking at 64,000 global stocks, stocks outside the US were more likely to underperform the risk-free rate. The top 2.4% of the performing stocks accounted for all of the net wealth created during this period, again, in excess of the risk-free rate. So the majority of stocks actually had a negative equity risk premium. And the aggregate stock market has done very well because the large returns of a few offsets the small and negative returns of the many. The distribution of long-term returns is not symmetric, but it's positively skewed. More frequent of small and negative returns with relatively few large outliers. The reason why either a market cap weighted average or an equal weighted average will outperform the vast amounts of stocks is that these averages gets pushed up by the performance of relatively few stocks, while the median stock underperforms. Now, if you think about it, it's pretty obvious why we would have this skewness in the stock market. Let's say every stock either goes up 10% or down 10% with equal probability every day. On that first day, you have symmetry in your outcomes. However, on the next day, you don't have symmetry anymore. On the next day, you have three cases. If your stock moves up 10%, then falls down 10% on the second day, you're not back to break even. You're actually down 1% due to the effects of compounding. Notice that the upside is higher than the downside for the two period cases. The distribution of outcomes is no longer symmetric. As we continue through time, the skewness and the symmetry becomes greater and greater due to the compounding effects. And you add then the fact that a stock's upside is theoretically limitless while the downside is minus 100%. So because of all this, it's not that strange that we see just a handful of stocks accounting for the vast amounts of shareholder wealth. The more eye-popping thing from these papers is that we find out just how few stocks we're talking about. Now, what should we take away from all of this? On the one hand, all of these results are in support of so-called passive investing. The odds are against you if you were to pick individual stocks not only to beat the market but to beat the treasury bills over the very long term. Between 1926 and 2016 less than a third of stocks outperformed broad market portfolios and similar results can be seen globally. Now the same is not true for investing in a broad diversified market portfolio. Virginity is cool. However, even though 2.4% of stocks accounted for all shareholder wealth created between 1990 and 2020 globally, we're still talking about more than a thousand stocks. But for investors that are not allocated to the top performing stocks, your returns might disappoint. 
if you just pick 10 stocks and expect them to be at least in line with the overall market, that is not necessarily the case. At the same time, for those who say that they have an edge or an approach to picking the right stock, they will be able to outperform everyone, right? The skewness and asymmetry in returns could be in their favor. So you're telling me there's a chance. They're not turned off by these odds since this is the historical success rate of picking individual stocks at random. Their approach is not random. Stanley Druckenmiller's portfolio, for example, is not constructed by monkeys, no disrespect to monkeys, but he has a team that does thorough research on companies every single day. I even hate to say how much time I've spent on this motherfucker. So for them, this research means the glass is half full, while for the vast amount of people, the glass is half empty and is filled with gasoline. Even if I do a lot of non-passing investing, I still try to stay uh, grounded. So papers like these are great since it gives you an estimate for the base rate of whatever it is you're doing. So. Stay humble out there. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe for more content and I'll see you next time.